Oh, it's another day and it's another pulse generator. This is a HP 8112A. Um, very popular in the uh, 70s and 80s and uh, very nice performing signal generator. Um, I used one of these probably, and it was a lesser model of 20 years ago, that uh, one of our customers lent us, I think it was BA Systems lent us to, to uh, use for some test equipment. Um, and uh, I got on with it really well. It was, um, it was a much more basic version of this, but it was a really nice, easy um, signal generator to use. Um, this one's been bought for uh, very little money actually, it's the cheapest I've ever seen one being sold for. Uh, and it's got a problem when it comes up with an error message which is E41. You know, before I bought it I had a quick look to see what it could possibly be. And there it could be a couple, couple of uh, things. One is um, blown output transistors, someone suggested a 24 volt supply has failed. Or it could be a more uh, catastrophic failure of a hybrid IC inside that's not available. Um, I thought for the money I pay for it it's worth a gamble. If I can get it all to work that'd be brilliant. And if not it might be interesting to have a look inside and see uh, what's actually gone wrong. Um, it's in pretty good nick. Uh, it's come with its all its feet though I must have I've taken one of the feet off because that, it fell off in the car so I've taken the other one off to stop it rocking about but it's come with all its feet comes with uh, a GPIB built in um, and it's in pretty good nick, it's got a couple of scratch marks around the uh, aluminium uh, uh, side panel here, the, uh, the the face here is a bit knocked about and it's got that sort of like yellow uh, look to it of either smoking or UV damage but uh, everything else looks okay, buttons feel like you'd expect them to feel a little bit clicky from the uh, where the springs need a bit of lubrication but in pretty nice nick. Um, funny enough I was looking at one of these on another auction site and when I found this one on eBay I thought oh I'll buy this one and when it got here the uh, the box it came in was the uh, had the same um, name of the company who was selling it on the other auction site so it looks like someone's maybe bought it and given up with it and moved it on or they've just got to a different site on eBay and they just call themselves something different. So here's around the back of the GPIB mains input here and it looks like a fan at the back here. It's quite a heavy unit actually it must weigh pretty weighs five kilos um, and it's long it's very long as you can see that's the only drawback it so if you've got a narrow shelf you know, a lot of the DVM sort of end here, but it's just got all this on the back. So let's plug it in um, and see what it does uh, and see if we can get any idea of what's wrong with it. So here's our E41 message, and I'm, even though that E41's come up, it does look like we've got some control over it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it on the scope just to see if we've got any output at all uh, and if we have. Them, we could probably work out if uh, what the hell's wrong with it. So let's plug it into the HP scope. So let's get that set up and I'll, uh, I'll come back. So it's uh, connected up to the scope. I've set it to a 65 nanosecond um, pulse, I assume. Uh, this is a square wave. And we've got something on the scope that doesn't look too shabby. Uh, let's measure it to see what we've got. And it's measuring um, a 10 millisecond pulse. Let's see if we can adjust it. Because I'm not entirely sure if I've set this to what I think I've set it to. Let's have a look. So what are we adjusting here? Sure what I'm adjusting here. Try and work out what we're doing here, shall we? This isn't making any difference on the scope at all. I'm messing about blind here a bit. That's duty cycle in percent. Okay, yeah, 50 50 duty cycle, so it's just our duty cycle. 
that works. 70, 80, 90, 90% duty cycle. Okay, strange. So, what's the problem with it then? Is it a, I mean, it could be something that's daft, it's like it's got an e problem, you know, it just, it's got corrupt data. Uh, triggers on normal. External triggering, that's obviously waiting for an input from the external trigger. A gated input, so you've probably got a button you can press manual, is it? Yep. Fire the trigger off. <laughs> T pulse, I don't know what that is. Or oh, one pulse. Okay. So we'll have that on normal. E burr, what the hell's that? No idea. This is very complicated and been out of my depth with all these buttons. I don't know what these buttons mean. So let's try some. Uh, so this is a ramp, is it? Okay, that's making an awful lot of. Di oh, is that the. Is that the. Rise time? Can we adjust that? Well, that's just making the duty cycle change as well. We're still on because we're still on duty. I wonder if that's the control input. I need to read the manual on this. This is just an initial uh, look at it, really. And what does this do? Still got the same waveform. One thing I have noticed is the uh, it's not particularly square. Am I AC coupled? No, I'm not. So it's not particularly square, but I'm probably not terminated properly either. I should be terminated into 50 ohms. So let's just have a let's try and get it to do something interesting. Oh, there's a laugh out there button. Does it work? <laughs> it does. So this is high limit, I'm not sure what that does. T R E. I think I'm gonna to have to come back and read the menu because I've got no idea what I'm doing, but it it appears like it's working. Um this disables the output. Yep. And this one. I'm not sure what the hell that does. There's a stop store recall button. It says no. Yes. No. Nope. So obviously store recall, then you select the number, do you? Nope. Oh there's a recall. So it's recalled that. I don't know how this works, to be honest with you. But uh, initially, it looks like it's got output, um, so we'll have to do some uh, proper checks on it to see if it works. But this is the uh, this is the HP uh, pulse generator showing some signs of life. Well, it, it seems to be working more or less okay. The E41 is a problem with the output amplifier, it suggests. Now, the output's obviously clearly okay, um, and it does suggest that... I, if that E41 comes up, I can't get an output level of up to 9 volts, and I can confirm that by, um, if I press this is high, limp, high level output, HIL, if I increase that, it will only go to 8 volts, I won't go any higher. That's not the end of the world, to be honest with me. Uh, I think I'll be quite happy to live with that. Um, so this is period. As you can see on the scope, it's working fine there. That's burst mode. Oh, uh, that's, you select the number of bursts I think you want. Um, that seems to be working okay. Uh, double pulse or single pulse. So that's a double pulse. And I think delay is the delay uh, between the pulses. Uh, width, duty cycle. Uh, that's leading edge rise time. That's trailing edge line, uh, fall time. And there your levels for your amplitude. So that's amplitude, leading and falling edges, uh, delay, um, and the pulse, sort of the, how many pulses it's got. They're not actually that clear on how this thing works, but uh, if there's a mess about the leading edge uh, and then increase that to a few milliseconds and I don't you can see there the scope's sort of gone more of a sort of like a ramped signal and if I adjust the trailing edge to the same point 
you can see that we start to produce a triangular wave, or well, more of a sinusoidal half a half wave, sort of rectified si signal. Um, this is the um, different output modes. This is just more of a square wave. Uh, this gives you a more sharper edge, and apparently this is sort of a. Um, I can't remember how to announce it, but it gives you a more sort of sinusoidal waveform. This button here, and you can clearly see that if I go back to the nice triangle wave. So, really, this E41 error message you get on these, yeah, there is a problem with something inside, and I'm probably going to look at it. But the, the function generator works absolutely fine without, as long as you don't want that full drive, as far as I can see at the moment. Um, uh, so I need to go through it a bit more. Um, I checked all the rails actually. If you take the base plate off, it's uh, a nice it's show you all the uh, positions of where all the uh, test points are. Uh, and check this on the underside of the board, and they will check fine. Uh, the power supply is good. Um, it's had a new um, battery back up here, as you can see. It's been put in quite nicely. It's in nice condition. There was a screw rattling around inside. I've no idea where that comes from, but. Uh, Everything okay? Looks okay here. This is, looks like the amp, uh, the power supply stage here. This is the fan that's running in the back. I'm just going to check all the screws that I can see are tight, um, and then maybe do a bit more investigation to why the amplitude levels are low.